Rodrigo Pastore, welche Note würdest du dem Team diese Saison geben? Okay, I will give the team a, a two. Um, I feel like reaching the playoffs was a, was a very good achievement for the group of players that we have, especially considering that uh, not everything went perfect during the season and we had to overcome different obstacles. So sometimes teams reach their goals because everything goes perfect. That was not the case with us. Um, and that makes for, for a two as a final grade. I feel like we were not consistent enough and we lost some games that we should have won. Otherwise, probably I would have given the team our, our one. Wie würdest du ähm, jeden Spieler mal ein bisschen in der Einzelkritik sehen? Also würdest du vielleicht zu jedem Spieler mal zwei, drei Sätze sagen, wie du ihn einfach einschätzt? Okay, let's start with the starting five. Um, I felt Virgil was, was the key player for our team. Um, I felt like um, when Virgil was, uh, was playing at his best, we were a very tough team to beat. I felt like some games he played very close to perfect. Um, and the most important thing is that I felt like uh, he made his teammates much better. Um, with Daniel, the big surprise of the season, uh, who would have said that Daniel would have been the best player of the team in the playoffs? And, and that's what exactly what happened. Uh, Daniel started the season with a small role, just the backup of Virgil, a point guard that usually plays more than 30 minutes per game. And very, very early in the season, he showed his teammates, the coaching staff, everybody that he could be um, held accountable. We play Kirschheim, Virtual comes out of the game with five fouls. And he led the team the last six, seven minutes uh, in a, an amazing way. When Stacy went down, we decided to move him to the starting lineup and he never came out again. So, great season for Daniel. Nate, uh, also Nate, I felt like he went from small, from, from uh, that he improved his performance during the season. I think he was also, like Daniel, a great beneficiary that uh, Stacy went down with an injury. So, we move him from position two, uh, four to position three moving Greg to the starting lineup and I think he benefited from that a lot. Uh, too bad that we didn't see him in the playoffs. I feel like we could have done a little bit better with him healthy against Jena. Greg, he was exactly what we were missing at the beginning of the season. And if he would have been with us from the beginning, we would have started in a, in a different way and not one and three like we did. Um, incredible hard worker, competitor. He brought on the table exactly what we missed. Um, um, he has some incredible games against Jena in Jena, 28 points, 17 rebounds. Um, definitely the best part of our team was when he was on the court. Martin, um, When the season started, um, we were planning on uh, having Martin as, a, as one of the main pieces of the team. I felt like he was doing okay for the, next, for the first two months of the season. And then I felt like um, he, hit, uh, he hit the wall. This is a term that we use a lot for rookies. The, um, During the season, they, they cannot um, be constant and, and they, they don't perform as, as expected. Um, second part of the season, Martin was way too inconsistent for us and, and he was making good performances with performances that were below our expectations on him. This is the big challenge for him to become consistent and, uh, and to be accountable uh, in every game that we play. 
not only on offense, but also on the defensive side of, of the court. Guys coming out of the bench, most of the times our first two substitutions were Henny and Rob. Rob was, uh, I would say, incredible the first part of the season, um, especially when playing at home. Uh, sometimes I felt like Virgil and Rob were the best pick and roll combination in the pro. Uh, um, Henny had a, a big role uh, at the beginning of the season as a six man coming out of the bench, playing big minutes, 25, 26. Um, once Greg arrived in the team and we moved Nate to the three spot, his minutes started diminishing. Uh, he has some very productive game for us, some other ones in which we used him a little bit less. But his attitude was always great. He was always willing to sacrifice for the team, to do the best that he could for the team. And we really appreciate that. Jonas started the season as a starter. When Stacy went down and we made adjustments on the starting lineup, he took a role of a player coming out of the bench. Um, I recall that Jonas, after only five, six games in the season, he already had more minutes than uh, the whole last season together. So I thought it was for Jonas his real first year as a productive and, and, and with a bigger uh, or an important role in Pro A. And we know there is a lot to work with him, but we're willing to invest time and resources on him. We expect from him big improvements during this off season. We're gonna do a lot of work with him, with Daniel, with our young guys. And we hope that he's gonna be even better prepared for the upcoming season, mentally and physically. Uh, Kenny, Kenny arrived also during the season. He came, uh, he was chosen especially because of his outside shooting ability. It was tough for him to adjust from Pro B to Pro A, and sometimes he had a really hard time. I was very happy for him to see him late in the season having some productive uh, games for us. Stacy and Dashwan. Stacy had a big, big role at the beginning of the season. We were hoping that the transition from being a player coming out of the bench to a starter would have been faster and easier on him. Um, I believe that he improved a lot this season, especially on the mental part of the game. We would have seen this a little bit clearer if he would have gotten hurt. I thought the injury took too long um, and guys being out of the court for as long as he was, um, it's not easy to come back in top form. So we saw the Stacy that we would have liked to see from day one in games like Leverkusen and, and maybe game one in, in Vienna. But uh, he was unlucky, a really bad injury that it took way too long to, for him to be in top form. Dashwan had probably a very, very difficult time adjusting to a team that um, maybe was already used to a different way of playing than the way he likes to play. He tried to adjust to us, it was just too little too late. Uh, when Stacy came back, I had to make decisions about playing one or the other. We didn't feel comfortable having both of them on the court at the same time and the team was not producing as well as I would have expected. So. Um, obviously, late in the season, it was clear that we decided to go with Stacy. Wie sehr hat es die Entwicklung des Teams behindert, dass es so viele Nachverpflichtungen gab? Okay, um, it's not easy. Um, and during the season, we had to take some step backwards because we felt that we were not uh, improving as I would have liked to. It's not the ideal thing to have so many players during the season arriving and, and having to introduce everything from zero. We hope next year we don't have to do it at all. Um, but definitely it was something that didn't help as much last year. Um, 
and yes, it's a it's a difficult situation in which um, players need to to have patience and and to have a, a high basketball IQ to make this transition as fast as possible, so the team can keep on moving and improving and and arriving late in the season playing at the top form. Welche Spieler haben dich am meisten überrascht? Well, I would have to say that it has to be Daniel. Um, just because at the beginning of the season nobody would have thought that he could have achieved individually everything that he achieved and the trust that he gained from his teammates. Uh, I thought that the way that he played against um, Jena in the playoff was outstanding. In der freien Presse hattest du jetzt ähm, in einem Interview gesagt, dass das Team letzte Saison diese zwei Gesichter hatte. Könntest du das noch ein bisschen genauer erklären? Ja, yeah, es war für mich wie das letzte Spiel, Spiel 3 gegen Jena, die Weise, wie wir das Spiel beginnen, die Weise, wie wir es beginnen. Und dann, das in between second and third quarter, I felt like uh, you saw the two faces of the team. One of the faces is when we play very close to the potential, and that's everybody coaches dream. Every coach's dream is to see your team playing to what you imagine it could be the best possible way. I felt like the first half in Jena was a Chemnitz 99ers basketball, very, very close to perfection. Pretty much no turnovers. We were not giving up offensive rebounds to the adversary. We pretty much quiet the whole crowd in Jena. Uh, we surprised everybody with controlling the game the way we did for 10 minutes. Uh, second and third quarter was the other side of the coin. You saw a team that, especially after the injury from Daniel, in which we had difficulties uh, uh, getting the kind of shots we wanted to get. The ball movement was not there. We were forcing actions on offense def uh, and we were turning the ball over way too much. Defensively, it was hard for us to keep people in front of us, contain one-on-one. And especially boxing out rebound was a big, big um, problem for us in the series against Jena. So yeah, those those were pretty much the two phases the, of our team that I was talking about. Wie sehen die die Planungen für die neue Saison aus? Also wann gibt es die ersten Unterschriften und äh, wann ist geplant, dass das Training startet? Yeah, it's a little bit too early for new signings. Everybody knows that every team will start looking for Germans to improve the roster. We are not exception to that. We are also talking about when we would like to, to start next season. It's probably going to be the first day of August, but it's a little bit too early yet. So we are identifying players that we feel they will help us uh, improve our quality. These players are going to be first Germans and then Americans. Uh, we're also talking to the players in our team that we would like to, to keep for the upcoming season. And what do you think is ungefähr from the point of the first new verpflichtungen gibt? So, um, will that noch this month or the first month danach passieren? Yeah. Well, it's not easy to, um, to determine when the signing is going to happen because two things got to happen. The club has to reach financial agreement with the player and the player has to be willing to come to to Chemnitz. We know players got different options and offers sometimes. Um, there are different ingredients that push a player to choose in one or other direction. I feel like we have a very good idea of the players that we would like to bring. Now it's a matter of the club uh, finding a, a financial agreement with uh, with these players. Um, but definitely uh, Germans are probably going to come uh, or they have a prior we have a priority on the German signings before the Americans. Wenn du dir einen Spieler aussuchen könntest, der 2016, 2017 bei den Niners spielt, wer wäre das? Well, that's a hypothetical, a hypothetical question. So let's play with it. Um, I would say I would like to see in Chemnitz 99ers one maker. I would like to see him playing together with Virgil.
worauf möchtest du in der neuen Saison genauer achten und ähm, was muss noch verbessert werden, was möchtest du noch verbessern? Okay, I, th I think it's, you know, we've been talking about it a lot and, you know, as a roster we feel like we would like to improve a little bit the quality uh, of the individual players. Uh, individually, quality has to raise uh, a little bit and especially basketball IQ, we would like to to be able to mix youth with experienced players. Um, there were a couple of aspects that, you know, nothing wrong with the team last year. They gave everything they had, but we're going to try to 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 mix, to keep mixing experience with youth. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of the players that we sign has a little bit of experience and the other one uh, is, is, a, is a young player with a lot of a prospect with a with a high prospect uh, so um, that's regarding the roster the system um, there are a couple of areas that I hope that we can improve uh, late game situations end of game situations uh, inbounds and and probably we're gonna find alternatives to to our ball screen defense. There were some things that we would have liked to do last year that because of our personnel we couldn't really emphasize. So hopefully with the new signings and, and the new team putting together we're going to be able to be a little bit more versatile on both sides of the court. Was ist das Ziel für die nächste Saison? Well, I, I don't expect uh, the goal to change. Uh, we would like to make the playoffs again. You know, but as as a coach, I always concentrate on on on, on things that are uh, dependable on us. Uh, we can play our best. We can do everything we have to do to reach the playoffs. But we might find eight teams that are just better than us, and we might not be able to uh, to be there again like this year. So those things are not a hundred percent on their own. Uh, Uh, our control, what we can control, and this is the goal that I have for next year, is the performance that we're going to have as a, as a team. How we're going to train, how we're going to play, how we're going to prepare ourselves for each game. Those are things that we want to control and we want to do it in a certain way. Um, so that's, that's where my goal is going to be focused on performance. Wie ändern sich deine Aufgaben ohne den Sportdirektor Pete Miller? Well, definitely Pete is missed around here, uh, talking to him and, and, uh, and getting, especially before games, you know, being able to talk to somebody that was, was also a coach, he helps. Uh, you feel like you speak the same language and you understand each other, your point of view especially. So... Um, in that sense, he's missed. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we got guys like like Martin Schuster and and, and Steven, the or the guys in the office that um, that are trying to help uh, making the absence from Pete a little bit less relevant. Uh, and we're trying to move forward, finding finding the right kind of uh, teamwork that is required. Welche Vorteile gibt es für dich im Umgang mit den Spielern, weil du selbst mal Spieler warst? Yes, it's, it's an advantage. And, uh, I would say the biggest advantage is when uh, the player struggles. I think when you play before and every person that played this game struggle uh, at one point in his career. So, I understand what they go through and I try to advise them on how do you overcome these obstacles and this struggle. And, and sometimes you do it even before the struggle happens. So uh, it's, it's, it's constant dialogue with the players, sometimes individually, sometimes uh, as team. Uh, you always try to to prevent players from making some of the mistakes I made when I was a player. So it's an advantage, especially in, in complicated situations, in negative situations. By which trainer would you like to hospitieren? 
Well, no doubt uh, at this moment the, uh, the, the the coach that I that I follow the most and that I like to see him work and because also I enjoy a lot how they play is is Coach Trinkieri with Brosse Bamber. Uh, actually, I was there a couple of days ago and and I took the the opportunity to take two players with me. So. Uh, Daniel and Jonas came with me. We went to see um, a practice from Bamber, and I think it was a great learning experience, uh, experience for for the two young guys. So I'm hoping to repeat this again in the future, maybe with some other guys from the team. Verfolgst du die NBA und die BBL? Um, not during the regular season, the NBA. I like to follow a little bit the playoffs. Uh, I like how the playoffs are played, especially late. Uh, semifinals or conference semifinals, conference finals and the NBA finals, I believe is, is high quality basketball. Sometimes you don't see that during the regular season. And BBL, yes, whenever I have a little bit of free time, I try to to watch some of the teams that I that I that I like the most, especially Bamber, Euroleague teams, Euro Cup teams. Uh, whenever I have the chance for sure. Has to Lieblings team in the NBA? Not really. I mean I'm not a fan of a team or another or another team. Uh, maybe when I was young, yeah, I liked the, the Lakers, but uh, right now I enjoy watching the Spurs. Uh, actually I've been doing that for a while already, um, but there are some other very, very well coached teams, the Atlanta Hawks with uh, Butter Holzer and, and yeah, for sure the Golden State Warriors are fun to watch. I feel like um, I like also Stan Van Gandhi with the Detroit Pistons. Uh, uh, I like watching uh, Thibodeau when he was the coach with the Bulls uh, last season, especially from the defensive uh, standpoint. But um, at Liebling's at, at team, uh, Liebling's mannschaft, uh, no. Uh, I enjoy watching well coached teams, yes. Welches NBA team würdest du gerne mal coachen? Um, Would I like to coach in the NBA? That's a good question, uh, a different question. If I would like to coach in the NBA and I have the opportunity, um, it would have to be a team that is uh, is built with a certain type of players. Uh, so I would say right now, 99% of every basketball coach would tell you they would like to coach two teams, the San Antonio Spurs because Popovich was there and the Golden State because they're just incredible talented team. Um, was denkst du, welches team NBA champion wird? Um, it has to come up from the West and I would say that if it's no Golden State, it's going to be San Antonio Spurs. I don't see any other team playing at a at that level. And what thinks which is team the Deutsche Meister in this year? But? Well, uh, unless a big surprise, best of five, I don't see right now anybody beating Bamber. And um, the last question is then, noch, which player was in your Jugend for dich a großes Vorbild? Well, um, I love how Magic Johnson used to play. I mean, I'm, I grew up in, in that age with the Showtime Lakers and, and And Magic was incredible the way he passed, how he ran, fast break, and so I also loved uh, Kevin Johnson with the Phoenix Suns. I really like him as a point guard, and then yeah, Isaiah Thomas, uh, crossover between the legs, uh, incredible. So I would say that I always look up to to those three guys, uh, point guards. Uh, all of them could pass, shoot, uh, do do different things, and uh, and great leaders too. So I would say those three guys, and and I think also late in my career, I appreciate a little bit better the way John Stockton used to play. So yeah, those four guys. Done. Thank you for your time. Bitte schön.